chapter 2, the witch. At midday, he remembered that there was a young witch. She lived in a cave and she was very good at magic. He ran quickly to her. What do you need? What do you need? She cried. When he ran towards her cave, do you need fish when the weather is bad? I have a special instrument. You play it and all the fish swim into the bay. But it has a price, pretty boy. It has a price. What do you need? What do you need? A storm to destroy the ships. Do you want the gold on the ships? I can help you. I have more storms than the wind. My master is stronger than the wind. But I have a price, pretty boy. I have a price. I do not want very much, said the young fisherman, but the priest is very angry with me, and the merchants laugh at me, so I came to you, and I will pay you any price. What do you want? asked the witch. I want to send my soul away from me, answered the young fisherman. The witch's face became white. Pretty boy, pretty boy, she said. That is a terrible thing to do. He laughed and answered her, My soul isn't, isn't important to me. I cannot see it. I cannot touch it. I do not know it. I will tell you, but you must give me something, said the witch. She looked at him with her beautiful eyes. Five pieces of gold, he said, and my nets and my house and my boat. But how can I send my soul away? She laughed and answered, I can change the autumn leaves into gold. I can change the light of the moon into silver. My master is richer than all the kings of the world. The witch caressed her hair with her thin white hand. You must dance with me, pretty boy, she said softly. And she smiled at him. Only this, cried the fisherman. Only this, she answered. And she smiled at him again. Then we will dance together in a secret place at sunset, he said, and you will tell me everything. Then I can send away my soul. When the moon is full, when the moon is full, she said softly, and she looked around and listened. Three birds sang. There was no other sound. There was only the sound of the waves. So she pulled him next to her. She put her dry lips close to his ear. Tonight, you must come to the top of the mountain, she whispered. It is a special night and he will be there. Who is he? he asked. It is not important, she answered. Go tonight and stand under the tree and wait for me. You will see a dog and you must hit it with a stick. The dog will run away. Remember, do not speak to the owl. I will come with a full moon and we will dance together. How can I send my soul away? You must promise to tell me, he said. She came out of the cave into the sun. Promise, she said. You are the best witch in the world, cried the fisherman, and he ran back to the town happily. The witch went into her cave and burned the magic plant. She looked into the smoke. After some time, she said angrily, He must be mine. I am as beautiful as she is. That evening, when the moon appeared, the fisherman went to the top of the mountain. He stood under the tree. A big owl with yellow eyes called his name. He did not answer. A black dog ran towards him. He hit it with a stick and it ran away. At midnight, the witches were in the sky. They were like bats. Phew, they cried. When they came to the ground, there is someone here, and we do not know him. Finally, the young witch with red hair appeared. She wore a gold dress with peacock's eye on it, and her little hat was green. Where is he? Where is he? asked the witches when they saw her. She laughed and ran to the fisherman. 
she took him by the hand and then they danced in the moonlight. They danced round and round, then they heard the sound of a galloping horse, but they did not see a horse. Faster, faster, she cried, and then the fisherman was afraid. Something very bad was there and he was afraid of it. There was a man near a rock. He wore elegant Spanish clothes. This man watched the fisherman constantly. The witch laughed and he danced with her around and around. Chapter 3 The Secret A dog barked and the dancer stopped. They went to the man and kissed his hand. Come, let's pray, the witch said softly. The fisherman wanted to do this and he followed her. But when he came near the man, he called God's name. When he did this, the witch screamed and went away. The horse came and the man got on it. He looked at the fisherman sadly and then disappeared. The witch with red hair tried to fly away too, but the fisherman stopped her. Let me go, she cried. You must not say God's name. No, he answered. You are my prisoner. Tell me the secret now. What secret? said the witch. She tried to escape. You know, he answered. She began to cry and said to the fisherman, Ask me anything, but not that. He laughed and didn't want to release her. She couldn't escape. And so she said, I am as beautiful as the mermaid. And she put her face near his. But he pushed her away and said, I will kill you. You must tell me the secret now. She trembled. All right, she said. It is your soul, not mine. She gave him a knife. Why did you give me this knife? He asked. He was silent for a moment. She was terrified. Then she said to him, Our shadow is not the shadow of our body. It is the shadow of our souls. Stand on a beach with your back to the moon. Cut your shadow from the feet. Then you must tell your soul to live and it will live. The young fisherman trembled. Is this true? He said. He released and took the knife. Then he walked to the sea. The fisherman's soul said to him, I am your servant. Do not send me away now. Did I do anything bad to you? The young fisherman laughed. You didn't do anything bad, but I do not need you. He answered, The world is fake. Go where you want, but do not disturb me because my love is calling me. His soul called him many times, but he did not listen. He then arrived on the beach and stood on the sand with his back to the moon. Five arms came out of the foam and they asked him to come. His soul said to him, Do not send me away without a heart. The world is cruel. Give me your heart. How can I love my mermaid without a heart? He said. Please, said his soul. Give me your heart. The world is cruel. I am afraid. My heart is with my love now. He answered, Go away. But I also need to love, said his soul. Go away. I do not need you, cried the young fisherman. He took the little knife and cut his shadow from his feet. The shadow stood up in front of him and was very similar to the fisherman. The fisherman moved back slowly and he was afraid. Go away, he murmured, and never come back again. No, but we must meet again, said the soul. The soul's voice was like a flute. Now we will meet, cried the fisherman. Will you follow me into the sea? Once every year, I will come to this place and call you, said the soul. Perhaps you will need me. I do not think I will need you, cried the young fisherman. But you can call me. I can come here again. He went into the water and the striking played the magical instrument. The little mermaid came to meet him. She put her arms around her neck and kissed him on the mouth. The soul stood on the beach and watched them. And when they disappeared into the sea, the fisherman so walked away and cried. Chapter 4 
the soul's first journey chapter 4 the soul's first journey after a year the soul came down to the sea and called the young fisherman he came out of the sea and said why do you call me the soul answered come nearer i want to speak to you because i saw marvelous things so he came nearer and sat in the water and listened the soul said to him when i left you i went towards the east and traveled everything white comes from the east after six days i came to the land of the tatars one night i saw a fire in the camp of a company of merchants i went to them and the chief of the merchants stood up and took his sword who are you he asked i am a prince and i escaped from the tatars i replied he lowered his head as a sign of respect and took my hand then we left the country of the tatars and we traveled in many strange lands and saw many strange people. I traveled on and came next to the chief. There were 40 camels in a caravan and 80 mules. During our journey, we battled with the tribe of the Magadi. They are born old and grow younger every day, and they die when they are little children. We battled with the Lactroy. They think they are the sons of tigers and they paint their bodies yellow and black. We also battle with the Sibians. They have the horses' feet and they run quicker than the horses. In the fourth month, we arrived in the city of Ilel. It was night and we waited for day to come. That morning, we knocked at the gate of the city. The gate was red, bronze, and it had images of sea dragons and dragons with wings. A guard then said to us, What do you want? We are from the island of Syria and we have come. We have a lot of merchandise to sell, he answered. Then wait here until midday, he said. At midday, they opened the gates and we went to the marketplace. After a month in the city of Ilel, I became tired of it. I walked in the secrets of the city and came to the garden of the God of the city. The priests in their yellow tunics walked silently in the garden. There was a red house. This was the home of the God. The door had images of golden animals and peacocks on them. There was a pool of clear water and in front of the temple, I sat down near it. One of the priests came to me and stood behind me. What do you want? He asked me. I want to see the God, I replied. The God is hunting in the forest, said the priest, and he looked at me strangely. What forest is he in? Tell me, and I will go there. I answered. He moved his hands and on his soft tunic. The God is asleep, he murmured. Which bed is he in? Tell me and I will stand near him. I answered, The God is at the feast, he cried. I will drink bitter or sweet wine with him, I said. He was surprised and accompanied me into the temple. In the first room, I saw an ebony idol on the throne and in the side of a man. There was a ruby on his forehead. His feet were red from the blood of a baby goat. I said to the priest, is this the God? This is the God, he answered. This is not the God. Show me the God, I cried, or I will kill you. I touched his hand, and I became small and dry. Make my hand better, and I will show you the God, he cried. So I breathed on his hand, and it became better. He trembled and accompanied me into the second room. I saw an ivory idol and a lotus of jade with great emeralds. On it, the idol was twice as big as a man. Is this a god? I asked. This is a god, he replied. This is not a god. Show me the god, I cried, or I will kill you. I touched his eyes, and they became blind. Please, make my eyes better, then I will show you the gods, he cried. So I breathed on his eyes, and they could see again. The priest trembled and accompanied me into a third room. There was not an idol in it, only a 
mirror, I said to the priest, What is a God? He answered to me, There is no God, but this is the mirror of wisdom. It reflects all the things in heaven and on earth, but it does not reflect the face of the person if they look into it. So this person can become wise. There are many other mirrors, but they are mirrors of opinion. This is the only mirror of wisdom. When you possess this mirror, you know everything. So it is a God, and we pray to this God. I looked into the mirror, the priest didn't lie. Then I did something strange, but it is not important. I placed the mirror in a valley near here. We can walk there in three days. Let me enter you again and be your servant, and you have wisdom. But the young fisherman laughed. Love is better than wisdom, he cried, and the little mermaid loves me. No, there is nothing better than wisdom, said the soul. Love is better, answered the fisher, young fisherman. He went back to the sea, and the soul walked away and cried.